Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. I am bringing to you today a watercolor tutorial. I will be painting a swallowtail butterfly and I specifically wanted to paint a swallowtail butterfly today on St. Patrick's Day uh, kind of for just a goofy reason. Uh, one of my favorite little Irish jigs is called the swallowtail jig and I really wanted to find background music of the swallowtail jig, but I could not find anything that I could use copyright free, so I'll just put in some generic music in the background of this video, I suppose. <sighs> so, these are the brushes I'll be using. These are just my Mimic Squirrel brushes, just three of them. I'll be using Yellow Ochre, Pearl Red, a little bit of my sepia, lots and lots of Payne's Gray, and also a little bit of Thalo Blue for this painting. And down here in the left hand corner you can see my reference photo, and that is from pixabay.com. I will link to that in the description of this video. And there will also be a template of the drawing for this tutorial available to you and I am offering this template to you for free but only for a limited amount of time so for about the first 24 hours within this video being published that template will be available to you for free through my Gumroad page after that it'll be about three dollars and fifty cents and you'll be able to get that either through my Gumroad page or my Etsy page, whichever you prefer. But it is going to be free within the first couple of hours. Well, several hours. And the template that you will get will actually be a lot more refined than my original drawing. I made a lot of corrections to it and I went ahead and mapped out a lot of the details in the butterfly's wings for you, which I only kind of just roughly sketched them in here for me. Although I think I would have benefited from drawing in more of the small details, so I did that for you. I'm gonna start out with just a big light wash of my yellow ochre. This is a very, very light wash initially, but while it's still wet, I will go in with much more saturated yellows in some areas. I wanted to make sure to keep portions of the wings of the butterfly very, very light because I want to have a good range of values, especially within the wings of the butterfly. And you can see that I've changed the composition just a little bit from the photo reference. Basically, my 5x7 watercolor block is a different ratio than the original picture, so I just kind of cropped off portions of the top and a little bit of the bottom for my own composition. And part of what I wanted for this composition was to have most of the visual weight of this composition over on the left, and then on the right, I'll be leaving it mostly white. So now I'm going in with my phthalo blue. The background here is still very wet, so I'm getting a really nice soft blending of the phthalo blue with that yellow ochre in the background. I'm being very careful to avoid the petals of the flower. And so what I typically will do, because this is all still very wet, I'll line up the edge of my brush with the outer edge of the petals of the flower and then I'll pull outward and that helps a lot to make sure that we don't get any unintentional mingling although I will very shortly show you how to deal with a little bit of unintentional mingling and I decided to use my phthalo blue a little bit in this tutorial because while I've been on a kick of using a very very limited palette and not using any kind of true blue and just kind of letting my Payne's Gray be my blue, I wanted this composition to have more of a spring feeling. But I do want this background back here just to be very dark, so I mixed in some of my Payne's Gray with my Thalo Blue. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and start applying some darker mixes. Now this is all very wet and you can start to see that some of that very, very watery Payne's gray is going to start dripping and mingling down into the petal of my flower, which I of course want to leave very light and bright. So in just a second, I'm going to show you how to deal with that issue. So basically, I blotted that up with my paper towel, I cleaned off my brush and applied some clean water to that area, and now I'll use my paper towel again just to blot that up. And then I'll go in with a very saturated bit of Payne's Gray, again lining the edge of my brush up with the edge of the petal and pulling outward from there. And you can see that I have that nice clean line and by the end of the painting, you won't even notice that there was a bit of unintentional mingling into that flower petal. I am essentially going to completely finish the background and the flower of this composition before I really truly get into the butterfly. So what I'm going to be doing now is looking for areas in the background and on the petals that just need a little bit more saturation so I have a lot less water in my brush so that I can begin to define some of the texture in the petals keeping it of course very soft and subtle I don't want any dark lines on the petal of this flower because that would take away from how delicate it should look and it should almost be a little bit translucent going in with very thick yellow ochre in the background, some areas where I want to glaze over the darks and get some yellows back in there. And then I'm going to start looking for opportunities to apply this orange, so my pearl red and yellow ochre into the flower, keeping it very light for now and very translucent. I don't want to go in too heavy too fast. And also while the flower area is still wet, it will help to keep everything very soft so we don't get any bold lines. And I'm going to be focusing most of my attention for the next couple of minutes on the flower. And I want to let that dark greenish, grayish background really dry. There's only a few other things I want to do back there but I wanna go ahead and let that layer dry so that I can apply some glazes on top. So I'm gradually building up the vibrance in the mixes that I'm using for the flower, so adding increasingly more of my Purell Red to the mix, though I am keeping everything fairly watery and diluted at this point. But I also want to Kind of focus all my attention on the flower for now while it remains wet again just so i can maintain those nice soft edges and now i'm adding some warm tones into parts of the background where there's some buds it's a very subtle effect but i think that it kind of helps things just look a little bit more natural and because i'm using a small palette i need to just clean off this little mixing well here I do have another part of this palette, but I find that I usually do okay just using this very small one, and it kind of helps me to not waste much paint too, so I've kind of been enjoying working with a very small palette. So you can see that I applied some nice glazes of that yellow ochre into the background just a bit right underneath the flower, mixing in more red here. And now it's a lot less diluted, so we have more pigment, so I can really go pretty bold in just a few sparse areas on this flower. I don't necessarily want my flower to end up being as orange as the flower in the photograph, because I really like the idea that yellow is the unifying color in this whole composition, so I'm trying to maintain that. And then there's just one stamen from the flower kind of protruding and overlapping with the butterfly, so I want to make sure that I get that into place, especially before I start doing any of the dark markings on the butterfly. So I went ahead and just painted that with a light wash of orange. The area in the flower that I'm 
really being most careful about is that petal that is protruding out toward us a little bit. It's kind of foreshortened and that's what the butterfly is actually resting on. And I want to be careful in that area because I want to create the sense of space there without using very much of any kind of dark or muted mix of color because I really don't see much of that within the flower, but I still want to create a little bit of depth and space. Now I'm mixing up a more saturated mix of my phthalo blue and Payne's gray, and I'm not going over the entire background again. What I'm really doing is just adding a few bold strokes back here just for some subtle texture. This won't show up too much, but I think that if I leave that background just as it is, it's just a little bit too flat. So I just added a few bold strokes there, and then I will define some of these buds just a little bit more as well. Give them a little bit more separation. And now I am mixing up more of a muted violet, so my pure old red and just a little bit of that blue-gray mix. And then I'm going to just apply a few strokes of this, especially on the buds and at the base of the flower where there is just a little bit more shadow, a little bit more of these muted colors in some very sparse areas. And this will also help to add a little bit of a warm undertone to some of those greens as well. And at this point, I am mostly finished with the background. That doesn't mean there won't be a little bit of finagling again, but I am ready to kind of let things just set up and move on to the butterfly. So I'm going to go ahead and switch out my water, get some nice clean water. And then I'm going to go ahead and start applying some of the markings on the butterfly. For now, I'm leaving the light yellows just as they are. And you can see in the photograph that the value of the yellows on the butterfly are quite light. So I definitely don't want to add too much saturation in there, but later I'll be able to make a better judgment call and I'll add a little bit more yellow to just a few select areas. The mix that I'm using here to start blocking in some of these markings is a little bit of my Payne's Gray and Pure Old Red. And even though these markings are quite dark, I'm not going to go in with a really saturated mix at this point. I'm going to go ahead and block them in with a mix that is not, I wouldn't say it's diluted, but I'd say it's about medium. So it is very dark in value, especially relative to what it's going on top of. But as always, I really like to create undertones, especially within dark areas and especially with animals, because I don't want those areas just to appear flat and blocky. So I am using this somewhat diluted mix of a muted violet with that Payne's Gray and Pure Old Red to begin to block in those areas. And then when I go over these areas with my more saturated, strong, dark mix, I will allow a few little spots that are barely perceptible to show through. And I think that that just helps to give a more natural appearance. And because I didn't draw in a lot of these markings, especially the little dots at the tip of the wings, I'm just being very careful to go around those. But as I said, if you use the template that I've created for you, I've actually drawn all of that in. And I also shaded that template a little bit so that you can clearly see which markings are dark and where the yellow should be showing through. So you can see I added a little bit more of a saturated mix to the tip of the one top wing, although that's not my final pass, but you can see that I left it a little bit blotchy so that, again, I don't want to get a really flat look to that area. I want it to be just a little bit mottled. And as I'm working on the body of the butterfly, I think we all know that butterflies tend to be a little bit fuzzy. So in order to create a sense of very soft texture, such as 
fuzz or fur, what I like to do is lay down a lighter coat, especially in the areas again that are going to be dark, so that when I add texture with my darker, more saturated pigments, and typically I'll be using a dry brush for that portion of the painting as well, I can allow some of that lighter value to show through, and that just creates a really nice sense of depth while keeping everything very soft. So I'm going in even a little bit lighter now on certain portions of the wing because if you look closely at the photo reference in that very bottom segment of the wing, some of the markings are noticeably lighter than they are in the top portions of the wing. So I'm being very mindful of laying that down pretty light. And now I'm mixing in a little bit of yellow into that muted violet just to tone it down a little bit more and add a few more of these very soft lines and a little bit of soft texture to the body of the butterfly. And I'm also beginning to put the legs in place again with this very light mix of that muted violet. And I had to move my palette out of my way to do some of this detail work because I was afraid I would end up putting my hand into the palette. And I'm quite sure that I would have. So I went ahead and added a lot more of my Purell Red into that mix of muted violet just to add a little bit of depth and dimension and form to the stamen of the flower. And then also to the portion of the flower that is behind the butterfly. Again, just to create a very subtle sense of depth and space. And I cleaned out that well on my palette just so I could have a place to have some really nice clean yellow. You can see that my water is actually pretty dirty at this point, but I usually find that at some point it becomes unworkable, but for the most part, I don't find it an issue to work with paint or with water, I'm sorry, with water that looks dirty. Sometimes it looks dirtier than it is, and as long as it's not actually impacting the color that I'm applying, I usually won't switch it out. So I am using a very light glaze of this yellow just to begin adding in a little bit more saturation in a few select portions of the wing. Again, I always want to avoid my paintings looking flat, especially when I'm painting animals. So it's important to me to have some areas that remain very, very light in value, even if I'm adding just a subtle bit of saturation or value to other portions. And then, I want to get back into the details of the butterfly and I can see that in that lower wing some of those spots are actually more orange with just a little bit of yellow showing through so I'm adding some orange but allowing plenty of that yellow just to peek through a little bit. And then here I have a lot of red on my palette that I've added in to go ahead and really emphasize some portions of the flower that really stand out as being very saturated. Going back into the Payne's Gray, and I want this to be a pretty heavy mix, so not a ton of water, although I want it to be pretty malleable. And then you can see I blotted my brush off onto my paper towel so that I can begin to do a bit of dry brush. And basically what I'm doing is just dry brushing over the base layers on the dark markings. Again, really making an effort to allow some of those lighter areas to show through. And another tip, for example, on those dark lines on the wings of the butterfly, I would say you don't necessarily want to paint them straight. You want to let them be very organic and loose. So while you might feel the urge to be extremely meticulous and careful when you're painting a subject like this, I would say maybe you don't need to be quite as careful as you think. As long as you're staying somewhat true to the form, a few little squiggles outside the quote-unquote lines never hurt anyone. And now again, I am just going in with some dry brush into some of those darker markings. 
And now with just a little bit more yellow in a few very select areas, I have to be careful applying the yellow over those dark markings because there is a chance that you could reactivate those darker pigments on your painting and then they would begin to mingle in with your yellows, which we don't want in this situation. So make sure that your darks are very dry before you glaze any yellow on top of them. And the best thing to do is not to glaze on top of the dark markings at all and just to be a little bit more careful about applying that lighter color around those dark markings. And now I'm just fidgeting a little bit more with this flower just to make sure that there's enough vibrance in there to make me happy because I of course don't want a muted dull flower. And then an interesting touch on this butterfly was just that there's a little bit of bright blue in the bottom portion of that wing. And I thought that was really interesting because I didn't notice it at first when I picked out this photo reference. And I think that it's kind of funny just because I did end up choosing to use some of my phthalo blue, which is a really nice bright warm blue. And I wouldn't have necessarily had that on my palette if I was just painting the way that I have been lately. So I think it's funny that I decided that I would be using a little bit of phthalo blue today, and then I found that little mark with a bit of phthalo blue. Now I'm just adding a little bit more texture and shadow to the base of the flower and to some of those little buds in the background. Again, just to help create a little bit more of that form without going overboard. I don't want it to have really dark values in the flower or the buds because then they would appear a little bit less soft. All right, so that is it. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember, there is a template available to you, free for a limited time. And I hope that you'll choose to join me here on YouTube. I have a feeling I'm going to be making more content uh, for a little while than I normally am able to do. So I think that this is a great time just to spend developing our artistic skills and kind of coming together on a positive ground. So thank you so much for tuning in and I hope that you have a great day and that you stay well.